What's up guys, my name is Ficknumber here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a bit of a different video for you. It's something super simple to a lot of people, however, if you're not aware that this is a feature, then this is probably going to be an entirely life-changing video for you. So assuming that you're working on some kind of PowerPoint or some kind of art project, anything along those lines, then you need to basically drop in an image from the internet. I'm going to open up Affinity Photo, which is basically Photoshop, and I'll simply make a new canvas. You may be used to seeing something like this. This checkerboard background means that there is no background. It is entirely transparent. So if I were to draw something out, give it a color, and if I were to save it as a PNG, note it has to be PNG, otherwise you won't have the transparent background. If I save it as a PNG onto my desktop, you'll see that it doesn't have a background. If I drag it along my desktop background, you can see that only the square is visible. If I open it up with something like a Windows Photo Viewer, you can just see that rectangle with nothing else in the background. And if I were to put it in something like Discord, you'd see only this red square, meaning that the background does not exist. What does this mean? Well, if I were to take this image and save it as a JPEG, you'd see that the background is white, meaning that there is actually a background and it's not invisible. Hence, it needs to be a PNG. You can also see the outline of the white over here. Hypothetically, if you took a PNG, you could quite obviously drop it onto another project. So if I were to take this PNG, drop it onto here, you can see just the square is visible. However, the entire picture, quote unquote, is here because all of the transparent pixels are still here. If I were to drag and drop the JPEG onto it, you'd notice that the background is very definitely there. Remember, this was a checkerboard. Now it's in fact white. So with some of the basic explanation out of the way, how exactly do you find transparent images on Google? While heading across to Google Images, if you were to type in a query like cat, you'd find a bunch of cat pictures. Now you would think the ones with white backgrounds might be transparent, so you'd click on it, and you'd think, great, cool, let me download this, and drag and drop it onto my project, and you'll soon notice that the background is there. Now instead of tediously taking a tool, such as the eraser, and getting rid of the background yourself, there are a ton of easier ways. Of course, you can use different selection tools. Go ahead and select what you want to keep and then delete the rest of it. However, that is a ton of effort and we can skip the step entirely. Heading back to Google, if we scroll up to the top, right under the search bar, you'll see all images, videos, etc., etc. In the very far right, we have tools. Click that. And then we have a bunch of new options. Size lets us pick what kind of image size we want. So the bigger, the higher the quality, color, usage rights, type, and time. We're going to look under color and you'll notice transparent. What exactly does this mean? Well, it means that it has some sort of transparency in it. So if I were to click on an image, you'll see as soon as the preview loads completely, you see a familiar checkerboard background. If I were to drag and drop this image, you'd see that it doesn't have this checkerboard background. It's in fact, just this little cat head. So if I right click save, add it back to our little test project, you'll see that there is no background. It's just what it is. Now that we've learned how to find transparent images on Google, how exactly do we tell if they're not? Well, simply if you click on it and you see that this checkerboard background is not here, then it's probably not a transparent image, such as this one over here. You can see the checkerboard background around the little square picture. So obviously if you were to save this, you'd have this little picture with a bunch of clear space around it. Not exactly what you might be looking for, but just be aware of that. Next, you have people who don't understand how transparency works. If I were to go to change it back to any color and I type in transparent, click on an image. You may notice that when it was loading, the checkerboard background wasn't white. What does this mean? Well, a simple drag test shows that the checkerboard background is in fact on it. What does this mean? Well, if we go ahead and download it, add it back to our project, you'll see there's a checkerboard background around the cat. So let's draw out a background. You'll see the checkerboard background is still there, meaning that it's part of the image. This image is not actually transparent. It's just made to look like that on the internet, just because of the way that people did this. What they might have done is they might have taken a screenshot of it from it, their editing piece of software and put it on the internet. Why people do this, I have no idea. I would usually think that you'd have to click on the actual website itself, click on some sort of download link to download the actual transparent image, but it's a hell of a lot of effort. Sometimes you'll also find images with white backgrounds that blend in with the Google search, but you won't be able to tell that they're actually images. So again, tools, color transparent is a lifesaver. Here's another one down here. For some reason, these are popping up under transparent, but you can see the checkerboard is here and it's slightly blurry. And the checkerboard is also here where transparent images don't have the checkerboard. You can see checkerboard, 
no checkerboard. So a super simple life-saving tip if you're making a project of any kind. Most programs are compatible with PNGs, with transparent backgrounds, PowerPoint, etc, etc. It is truly a lifesaver and it will save you a lot of time. Understanding the little quirks of Google may be difficult for some people, but once you've learned it once or twice, then it will be quite life-saving and time-saving. This is a very different video, but it is going to be incredibly useful for those of you who need it. Thank you all for watching. My name is Ben Number here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.